Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. Now, last week on ClassicsToday.com, Jens Larsen, my colleague, who is an absolutely splendid critic and perceptive listener, reviewed a disc on the bridge label that somehow eluded my notice. Don't ask me how. It is this one. And it is so cool and so interesting, I figured I would do a talk to supplement that review. So I really urge you to go on to ClassicsToday.com and read Jens's rev review of this splendid disc. It is entitled Buried Alive. Now, of course, the world of classical music is probably the only place in the universe where something called buried alive, and which is about buried, uh, being buried alive, is considered a good thing. Yes, it's a wonderful thing. It's an opportunity for all kinds of novel, musical, expressive ideas, at least theoretically, if the composer knows what he's doing. And this particular composer, Otmar Schick, really knows what he's doing with this thing. So I rushed out like the sick mother that I am, and I immediately grabbed it, and I just have been having the best time, not just because of Buried Alive, but because of the other things on the disc as well, because this is a disc programmed by Leon Botstein and the Orchestra Now, which is Botstein's new orchestral project. Now, there is no one, no one in the universe who is more passionate about unusual repertoire and the relationship between music and society and social and political trends than Leon Botstein. I have had some very harsh things to say about him as a conductor, because as a conductor, I often think, especially in the standard repertoire, he's no great shakes. But when he is passionate about something and gets behind this interesting repertoire, he can be just fabulous. And this is one of those moments where he really nails it. It's very, very exciting. And he has the orchestra now, which is a very good student orchestra made up of graduate music students. And they're terrific. They really are. I've been enjoying their live concerts now for more than a year. I'm looking forward to them starting up again at some point when this pandemic BS is over. But until then, we have Buried Alive, which is just perfect. I mean, if you think that Alan Pedersen is too relaxing and intimate, then you really need to hear this. And more on that in a moment. But I want to tell you everything that's on here because it's really a cool collection. The, the general concept here is very vague, aptly so, which allows freedom to find the most compelling musical program. The, the idea simply is music of the 1920s. And you get Honegger's Rugby, which never for the life of me sounds like a rugby game. I mean, it, it, it's, it's supposed to be two opposing teams doing rugby things, but it sounds like a, a sort of gnarly contrapuntal mishmash, which is what most of Honegger sounds like. It sounds like Honegger. I think it's terrific. It's a terrific piece. It's part of a series. He wrote three works, which he called Mouvement Symphonique, the most famous of which is Pacific 231, of course, the most cogent and telling orchestral depiction of a railroad, of a train chugging along. And the last one is simply called Mouvement Symphonique Number no. 3. It has no programmatic title. And Rugby is either the first or the second of them. I mean, does it say here which one it is? Uh, rugby, Mouvement Symphonique. That eh, doesn't say which one it is. It doesn't make any difference. I don't remember, frankly. All I know is that three is the other one, and the other two are either Pacific 231 or Rugby. And this is very well performed. I mean, it's really, really got lots of gusto. And, and, and you do sort of get the give and take and push me, pull you of a, of a rugby game, which is not the most organized of all team sports anyway. It's kind of like a big mess where everybody, you know, jumps all over each other. And so I guess that works. The third piece on the disc, which is quite extraordinary also, is the Concerto Grosso by Dimitri Mitropoulos. 
Yes, before he became the famous conductor, like so many people who later became conductors, George Zell was one, he was a composer, Klemper, Bruno Walter, they were all composers, everybody did it. And then they realized that they were really bad composers. I mean, Victor de Sabata, Toscanini, they all wrote music. They all wrote music fairly, fairly uninterestingly, and then they gave up and become, became conductors. Well, Metropolis was one of those. Is the Concerto Grosso a masterpiece? Nah. No way. No way. Is it interesting? Hell yeah! It really is interesting. It's in four movements. There's nothing really Concerto grosso -y about it, I suppose, except perhaps the fact that each movement is written for different instrumental forces, usually strings with a couple of winds or a horn or something. And then in the finale, the full orchestra with percussion gets hopping and it all gets going. But I want to play you a little bit because Bridge Records has kindly given me permission to do so. A little bit of the chorale, third movement, which is the longest movement. And all of these movements are based on some theoretical principle, usually intervallic, you know, that they have, you know, melodies that flow along in like fourths and fifths, and then thirds, and then seconds, and then I guess firsts, I don't know, whatever it is, it doesn't make any difference. But the chorale is really quite haunting, very dissonant and in a sense, but full of interesting sound and texture and beautiful, it's beautiful music, I think. And I would like you to hear just a sample of the climax of it, which just just for strings and winds. And it just goes to show there's still life in these old arrangements of, of of instruments because Metropolis shows a lot of imagination. The thematic material isn't terribly distinguished. I don't think how he would have had a huge future as a composer based on this single exemplar, but gee, it's nice to listen to. It's awfully cool to have. And again, uh, Botstein and, and the orchestra now play it, I think, really, really well. There's a little performance noise. You hear the wind players gasping for air. Eh, who cares? Have a listen to the Third Movement Chorale from Metropolis's Concerto Grosso, which provides the lively conclusion to the disc. Interesting, isn't it? I mean, I hope that whets your appetite for the whole work. It's really worth hearing. It's really a yeah, very, very interesting one-off kind of piece. And so that was exciting. But now let us turn to the masterpiece, Buried Alive by Otmar Schirk. Now Schirk, you know, is a Swiss composer who is basically known for his song settings. He was one of the leader guys. Um, I've never been terribly interested in him. There are people who swear by him. They're called either shirkers, or if you're from Eastern Europe, shirkniks, or possibly shirksters. You can take your pick. And the shirksters just can't get enough of this guy. Um, I think he was a minor figure, actually. But again, who cares? If it's good music, it's good music. Where he, he falls in the history of humanity and music as a whole is not something we need to decide at this moment. Now, Buried Alive is a song cycle, really in the vein of Das Lied von der Erde or Zemlinski's Lyric Symphony. Remember, I did sequels to Das Lied von der Erde. This could be one of them. Or Shostakovich's Michelangelo's Suite. You know, all of those pieces it's written for, originally it was written for basso profundo, but later arranged for baritone and orchestra. It's 45 minutes long, just a single singer who has to sing the whole thing. It's miserably taxing. You can just imagine it. It's brutal, brutal to sing. 
and very, very tiring. And the topic itself is exactly as the title implies. It's a bunch of poems by some guy. Let's see who the some guy is, if it tells us here. A song cycle on poems by Gottfried Keller, the household name Gottfried Keller. So he wrote a bunch of poems about a guy who was buried alive, and he's wondering about his life. You know, his life passes by before him, and the poems reflect his life passing before him until he finally lets go of it all and, of course, dies, which is a happy thing. Again, remember, this is classical music. Being buried alive is good, and death is happy. That's how classical music works. For all of you people who are not classical music fans, get ready to have some of your normal assumptions questioned. But this is the 1920s. It's kind of expressionist. And I'm going to play you one of the poems, poem number four, which has the most charming title. In German, it's Lag ich, uh, let's see, Lag ich voes hyenen gibt, which means, or huyenen, hyenen, huyenen, if I lay in the sand, I don't think the sand is in here, but that's okay. Um, if I lay where hyenas roam, or hyenas hang out, or where there are hyenas, I guess it's a little more prosaic in German. The English is a little more poeticized. So let me read you the text, and then we're going to listen to this thing. Oh my God, you have no idea what to expect. Okay, you ready? If I lay in the sand where hyenas roam, yes, uh, with hope I would await the night when a hungry one comes roaming to dig me up uh, with, with, let's see, let's see, to dig me up with, what does it say here? Oh, yeah, to dig me up with howls from the, the loosely filled grave. That's the first stanza. And it only gets better. The second stanza is how I would struggle with the greedy beast unflaggingly to save my life. We would be fighting, rolling in the sand. And, and I am sure that I would conquer. Oh, yes. I mean, just imagine being dug up by a hyena. And of course, it's no contest, right? And then finally, I'd throw the beast down on its back and jump about a newborn in my shroud. Because remember, he's buried. He's wearing a shroud. Singing. Oh, he's singing. Singing merrily. Singing merrily while while something happens here. Uh, singing merrily while, you know, I really need a magnifying glass. These tiny print things. Um, while something, something hound, the something hound, the horn swoggled, no, ach, dig, vona glick, that doesn't help me at all, does it? Okay, singing merrily while, you know, the hound is hounding. I'd throw the undertaker, I'd throw, oh yeah, and then finally, oh yeah, when he, oh, he's, he's okay, he's beating, beating up the hyena. Let's just put it that way. And then it ends with, I'd throw the undertaker into the doctor's face. I mean, these are the people who buried him alive obviously. And now that he's back, thanks to the hyena who he's just defeated, he can throw the undertaker into the doctor's face. Isn't that charming? Isn't that just something you're dying to hear? I was. I don't know about you because I'm a classical music person and we like these things. I keep emphasizing. We like these things. So this version of it, the baritone version, has only been recorded once before by Dietrich Fischer Dieskau in 1962. So this is the only recording and it's for big orchestra and it's totally cool. And now we're going to listen to the marvelous baritone Michael Nudge. Um, you know, it's Hungarian, N-A-G-Y, Nudge is how that's pronounced. Michael Nudge, baritone with the orchestra now under Leon Botstein, singing about hyenas digging up the live dead guy from his grave. Listen to this. <laughs> Ich 
bis hungrig eine käme, hier grant ich heulend aus, der Locken drauf zu scharren. Die wollt ich freudig mit dem Dirgen Tier dann um mein Leben unermüdlich ringen. Im Sande bald ich mich herum mit dir und weiß gewiss, ich würde sie bezwingen. Und auf den Rücken schwäng die Beste sich und spreng im Leichen Ohren und singen Teufels und schlück von niedlich den Arzt, den Leichengräber um die Ohren. Wasn't that fun? And did you notice how at the point where he's beating up the hyena and dancing madly and flinging the undertaker into the doctor's face, the music has this sort of waltz tempo, you know? It gets quite lively and zippy and perky. I mean, it's really, it's really a cool piece. I mean, yes, so it's a little dark. I, you know, what do you want? I mean, look at what the topic is about. Why would anyone want to set it in the first place? I don't know. Mahler did songs on the death of children. There's all kinds of demented text setting, you know, so I, I'm, I'm the last person to criticize. I am so happy that this came out. It is so splendidly performed, marvelously recorded, an absolute treasure for serious collectors. And I mean serious, because Buried Alive is not for people who are not serious. As you can tell, I take it with the utmost seriousness, nothing nothing but seriousness. But this is a fabulous production. I'm thrilled that Bridge Records was able to issue it. And it really deserves some attention because there's not so much Otmar Schuch out there. And all these Schucksters will be dancing along with the hyenas. I mean, I can just imagine. Anyway, you know what I mean, right? And you know if you want this. But if you're curious and you want some good, challenging, interesting, unusual repertoire, splendidly performed, then this baby is for you. Absolutely. Keep on listening, folks. Thanks for joining me and enjoy being buried alive. <laughs>